everyone, welcome back to our lesson video for this week. I hope uh, you're safe and uh, healthy as we begin our discussion for this week. May we invoke uh, the presence of the Lord first as uh, we say in the name of the Father, the Son, uh, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we praise and glorify your name each day. We thank you for all the blessings, especially the gift of life you showered us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn in this time of global pandemic. Bless our classmates, teachers, and school that we may bring hope to our community. We humbly ask for your forgiveness to all our shortcomings and help us to be a better person. Grant us wisdom, peace of mind, and a pure heart to be a blessing to other people. Father, we are grateful uh, that you are true to your word, uh, that you are with us and will not leave us. May you continue to bless us with your grace and love. We ask all this through Christ our Lord, uh, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, and now, before we proceed to our lesson, let's do have first our one-minute warm-up, and uh, please follow the given step on the next slide. As you start browsing your learning guide, you have your preparatory activity on uh, the learning content intended for this week that is entitled as Tell Me What You See. So with the following image, so there is also a guide question that is uh, stipulated on your learning guide that, and that is, can you think a single word or a concept that is depicted or portrayed in uh, the given uh, picture or photos on uh, the screen? And in fact, this is referred to inequality. Where in inequality, this actually refers to the phenomenon or unequal and or unjust resources and opportunities among the members of the given society. Wherein we have this inequality, the term inequality may mean different things to different people and also in different contexts. Since inequality uh, as always exists, as a student, what are the simple deeds you may do as a student to promote uh, equality or just fairness at home and also in uh, doing online learning or and in your community? In connection to the preparatory activity, so we have now the learning content for this week intended lesson that is on Triangle Inequality Chorem. And we have the following goals for this week's lesson. So at the end of the session, you should be able to illustrate chorems that exist on triangle inequalities. And these are exterior angle inequality chorem. We have also triangle inequality chorem and the hinge chorem. And another goal is applies chorems on the different triangle inequalities. And the last one, which is proves inequalities in a triangle as we go over on the different uh, inequality theorem that exists 
we have to recall uh, some other important uh, concept on uh, the following. We have the interior angles. So if we are referring to the interior angles, this means that these are the following angles that is inside the polygon or within the polygon. And we have also exterior angles. For exterior angle, these are actually angles that is between a side of a polygon and an extended adjacent side. And we have this concept also regarding on remote interior angles. So these are the following the angles that do not uh, share a vertex or a corner of a triangle with the given exterior angle. For example, we have this figure too. So what is uh, our exterior angle? So as you can see on the figure, our exterior angle on uh, the given is 75. That, that, that is the angle that is outside the given polygon or outside of our triangle. And 105, 48, 27, those are the following interior angles that we have. How about our in, um, remote interior angles? So that means uh, that is uh, that do not share a vertex or a corner of a triangle with the exterior angle. So that means uh, we have uh, the, the following angles. We have 48 and 27. So our uh, remote uh, interior angles are the following. We have 48 and 27. 27. And now we have to deal on the first inequality theorem and that is called as exterior angle inequality theorem. For this exterior angle inequality theorem states that the measure of the exterior angle of a triangle is always greater than the measure of any its remote interior angles. And take note also that the exterior angle is equal to the sum of its remote uh, interior angle. For example, uh, for this one, we have to go back on the feature that is presented uh, on uh, the previous slide wherein we have uh, the following remote interior. We have uh, 48 and 27. So if you will going to add that, it gives us actually the measurement of our exterior angle of the given polygon, which is 75. And that is all about exterior uh, angle inequality theorem wherein the angle of the exterior is greater than of the, the any of the given remote interior angles of a given polygon. Wherein we can now conclude that angle or our exterior angle which is DCA is greater than our angle CBE or in the other way we have also the angle DCA which is our exterior is greater than to the other uh, measurement of our remote interior which is 27 and that is uh, basically we have uh, angle CAB. Let's have another illustration for a concept for the exterior angle inequality theorem. We will write the inequalities observable in uh, the given figure below or on your screen presented. So as you can see, we have now the solution wherein we will going to consider this triangle HAT or we can name it as PAH or it's up to you. We can name this also as ATH. So by the concept of the exterior angle inequality theorem, so we have now this exterior angle wherein we can now um, write our observation on the following angles that exist wherein for exterior angle inequality theorem, the angle wherein the measurement of our exterior which is HAM or we can name it as MAH is greater than the measurement of our remote interior angle, one remote interior angle which is this part. So we have AHT and the other one we have also the measurement of our exterior angle which is HAM is also greater than uh, to the measurement of uh, the other interior angle which is or the remote interior angle which is this part which is 51 and that is the measurement of angle ATH or we can name it as HTA. Supposed to be we have this another problem so given that the measure of exterior angle is equal to the sum of the measure of its remote interior angles then we will going to solve for X. So first step is we need to identify the following interior angles. So we have the following interior angle that we have or the remote interior angle. We have 
that is uh, angle A and angle B. And our exterior uh, angle, we have uh, the angle ACD. We're in uh, the given measurement for ACD is just simply 135 degrees. And then the given measurement for our angle A, we have 2x plus 3. And we have the measurement of angle B, which is 3x plus 2. And then afterwards, combine uh, the uh, like terms, which is uh, 2x and uh, 3x, and it will become uh, 5x. And then 3 plus 2, that is 5, and equate to 135. And then transpose 5 uh, to the other side of the equation. Therefore, we have now... 5x is equal to 30 because we will transpose this one. That's why we subtract 5 here. So it will become 130 and then divide both sides by 5. So therefore, we have now x is equals to 130 is 130 all over 5. That is actually 26 degrees. So therefore, the value of the our x is 26 degrees on this given figure. And we have also the second uh, triangle inequality theorem. We have the triangle inequality theorem 1. And it states that if one side of a triangle is longer than the second side, then the angle opposite the first side is larger than uh, the angle opposite the second side. Suppose to be we have this given triangle, we have uh, LMN, or we can name this triangle in the other way, we have uh, NML. So given the following measurement, we have the side MN that is 6 units and we have LM that is 4 units and LN is 3 units. So in uh, this theorem, so since uh, 6 is uh, the largest side given on the given triangle, then uh, the opposite angle of this side which is L is the largest angle or the largest measurement of angle. So L is the largest angle that we have on this given triangle and uh, for four units that is side lm that is uh, the larger side of the given uh, triangle therefore the opposite on this one the opposite angle of this side is this side which is n therefore angle n is uh, the larger angle on it and since uh, we have now to deal on the smallest units or smallest side measurement of side which is 3 this side ln then the the opposite on it the, the opposite angle on this side which is angle m is the smallest angle on the given triangle and that is triangle inequality theorem 1 so for example, we will going to list the angles in increasing order with the following given sides. So that is based on the triangle inequality theorem 1. So we will just base on the following, um, the opposite angle of the following sides. So since we are dealing with increasing, therefore, we will deal first on the smallest side. So the opposite of the smallest side, which is angle A. And then next one, which is 4, the opposite of that one is angle C. And we have now the opposite of the largest side, which is AC, is angle B. So let's take a look for this another problem. In applying the triangle inequality theorem 1, we have this triangle GHI whose perimeter is 50 units. And what is the largest angle? So since then, uh, we have the following given sides, but there is no exact measurement. That's why we need uh, to solve the, the value for x. Because we will be needing the exact values of the following sides because uh, the opposite of the, uh, the measurement of the longest side uh, or the opposite angle of that uh, longest side is the largest angle that it has. So we need uh, to apply the following concept whose perimeter if 50 units or in solving the values for x, we just uh, um, get uh, the measurement that is uh, indicated on the given figure and equate it to 50 units since we are dealing with a perimeter. So perimeter, we are dealing for the, that is just the sum of all the side of the given triangle. So therefore, we have now this formula gi plus hi plus gh is equal to the perimeter which which we have now the following measurement of gi which is 2x plus 1 
and we have for hi that is 4x minus 2 based on the given figure and we have the measurement of gh we have a x plus 2 and equate it to 50 that is the total units or the perimeter of the given triangle and then simplify combine like terms we have 2x plus 4x plus x that is 7x and then uh, negative 2 plus 2 cancel out and we have the remaining 1 and then we have now this equation 7x plus 1 is equals to 50 and then afterwards transpose 1 to the other side of the equation since this is a constant so therefore we have 7x is equals to 50 minus 1 and then uh, simplify 50 minus 1 that is 49 and then divide both sides by 7 so therefore we have now x which is 49 all over 7 that is 7 units since we know already uh, the um, the value of x therefore we can now um, compute the exact uh, measurement of each side we will just uh, by just substituting the given value of x which is 7 so second find the measure of each side so we have uh, the gi which is 2x plus 1 we will just substitute uh, 7 on uh, the given uh, variable that is on x therefore we have now 2 multiply to 7 plus 1 and then simplify we have now 15 so the exact measurement of uh, gi is 15 units how about for hi so we substitute again 7 to the x so we have now 4 multiply to 7 minus 2 simplify so 4 multiply to 7 that is 28 minus 2 that is 26 so the exact measurement of hi is 26 and we have also for gh that is x plus 2 since x is 7 and add 2 therefore we have now the measurement of 9 so in the question what is the largest angle so as you can see we have the measurement of the longest side which is hi so that means the opposite angle on that side we have angle g so therefore the, uh, the answer for this is angle g now we will deal on the other triangle inequality theorem and we have this triangle inequality theorem too wherein it states that if one angle of a triangle is larger than a second angle then the side opposite the first angle is longer than the side opposite of the second angle so for example to examine the following arrange the side from the shortest to longest so we have to deal on the following based on the triangle inequality theorem too so if the given we have the following given is angle and we are referring to we will arrange the following based on its side but there is no exact measurement outside therefore we can apply the concept for triangle inequality theorem too wherein we have the following measurement of the angles we have the measurement of angle a that is 29 and measurement of angle c that is 48 and measurement of angle t that is 103 so based on the concept of this theorem so since 29 degrees is the smallest angle that we have on the given triangle therefore the opposite um, side of this one which is ct so therefore we can conclude that, that ct is the the smallest side of the given uh, triangle or the smallest measurement of side of the given triangle and it follows by 48 degrees which is the opposite of um, our angle c is this side which is 80 so therefore the second larger um, side measurement of side is 80 and since uh, angle t is uh, the largest or the largest angle that we have on this triangle we're in the opposite of this um, angle is side AC so therefore AC now is the uh, longest uh, side that we have on the triangle so therefore we have the arrangement which is CT, AT and AC so that is triangle inequality theorem 2 so let's examine uh, another example problem for this one supposed to be we have this given so we will list the sides uh, in ascending order so as you can see the following uh, given measurement we have uh, the measurement for angle g that is 83 the measurement of angle m that is 56 and 41 for angle s and then we can actually arrange that one into ascending order that is from smallest to the 
longest side. So therefore, the opposite of the the smallest measurement of uh, the angle in the triangle that we have is 41. So the opposite of that one, we have side MG. And uh, it follows by 56. And then the opposite side of that one, that is uh, side GS. And the other one, we have uh, the 83 degrees. That is uh, the uh, the largest measurement or of the angle. And the opposite of that is, or, or the opposite side of this is this side we have MS. So therefore, that is now the ascending order of this given triangle. Let's have this another problem in applying the triangle inequality theorem number 2. So what is the shortest side of our given triangle JKL? So based on this, we have the following given measurement of our J, which is 3x, and our measurement of angle K, that is 2x minus 5, and angle L, that is x minus 7. So to find the shortest side, first is we need to solve for first the value of x for us to have the exact measurement of the degree of each angle so that we can conclude which of this given is the shortest side. So in getting the following, we have the following measurement of so simply we have this equation now which is the measurement of our g, angle g, and angle k, and angle l that is equals to 180 degrees. Why 180 degrees? Always remember that the, the sum of the interior of a triangle is always 180 degrees. And then we have to equate now or substitute the following given representation of the measurement of the degree. So we have for the angle G that is 3x, so we have 3x and for angle K that is 2x minus 5 plus we have the, the angle L that is x minus 7. And then afterwards combine like terms, we have now 3x plus 2x plus x that is 3 plus 2 plus 1 that is 6x and then negative 5 plus negative 7 that is negative 12 and then transpose constant to the other side of the equation. So therefore, we have now plus 12, and then uh, simplify, combine like terms again, 180 plus 112, that is 192. And divide both sides by 6, so therefore, divide by 6, we have 192 divided by 6, that is 32. So therefore, the value of our given, uh, the value of x is 32. Now that we know on the what is the value of x, therefore, we can uh, substitute that one on uh, the, the given uh, a measurement of its side or sorry angle so for angle j so since we have the the value of x which is 32 we just substitute that one on the given so we have 3 multiplied to 32 therefore that is 96 degrees so the measurement the exact measurement of our angle j is 96 degrees and we have for k which is 2x minus 5 so we just substitute again the value of x, which is 32 on the given equation. So we have now 2 multiplied to 32 minus 5. So 2 multiplied to 32, that is 64 minus 5, and that is 59. So therefore, the exact measurement of our angle K is 59. And we have angle L, which is x minus 7. So therefore, the value of x, which is 32, and we subtract 7 on it. Therefore, we have... 25 degrees so these are the following exact measurement of the given angles on the given triangle and the question here is we need to find the shortest side so since you have already the measurement of the shortest angle which is 25 degrees so therefore the opposite of the opposite side of this angle l is jk therefore we have to conclude now that jk is the shortest side of the given triangle. Let's deal on another triangle inequality theorem and we call it as triangle inequality theorem 3. And it's, it states that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of the triangle is greater than the length of the third side. So let's apply this concept. For example, we have this given problem. So is it possible to form a triangle with the units 3, 4, and 5? So how are we going to do it and apply by applying the triangle inequality theorem number 3? So 
kindly take a look for the unit that is given or the units given. We have 3, 4, and 5 and we just let E as equals to 3 and B equals to 4 and C is equals to 5. And by applying the given formula, so so we have this one A plus B is greater than C and A plus C that is greater than B and B plus C that is greater than A. So we need uh, to uh, satisfy all these three conditions uh, so that we can conclude uh, that the given uh, measurement R or the length is uh, or can be formed or can uh, possible to form a uh, triangle. So we just substitute the following given values. So we have uh, now our A plus B that is 3 plus 4 wherein we simplify that one uh, that is 7 is greater than 5. Is 7 greater than 5? That is true. How about on uh, the second condition, we need uh, to add uh, C, A plus C, and that is 3 plus 5, uh, or we have now 8 is greater than 4. Is 8 greater than 4? That is actually true. How about the last one condition, which is B plus C, that is 4 plus 5. Is 4 plus 5 greater than 3, or we just simplify that one, 9, or 9 is greater than 3. So that is true. Since we satisfy already the following three conditions, therefore, we can now conclude that the following uh, unit lengths, we have three, four, five, can possible to form a triangle. So let's have an example, another example for triangle inequality theorem three. So how about this one? Can we form a triangle with the lengths three units, four units, and 10 units? So for this step, we just let A is equals to 3 and B is equals to 4 and C is equals to 10. And we need to satisfy the following conditions and substitute by the following given units. We have 3 plus 4, that is our A plus B. That is greater than 10. Is, and we have also, sorry, we have also the other one, 3 plus 10, that is greater than 4 which is A plus C that is greater than B. And the other one, the last one, which is B plus C, 4 plus 10 is greater than 3. And we simplify the following. So we have now 7 is greater than 10, 13 is greater than 4, we have 14 is greater than 3. So is 7 greater than 10? So what is your conclusion on that? That is false. It must be 7 is less than 10. And how about 13 is greater than 4? That is true. 14 is greater than 3? That is true. So, since there is one condition uh, that is false, therefore, we can conclude uh, that 3, 4, 10 uh, cannot actually form a triangle. And the next uh, theorem that exists on triangle inequality, the last one which is Hinge theorem. For Hinge theorem, this is if two sides of one triangle are congruent, uh, to the two sides of another triangle but their included angle of the first triangle is greater than the included angle of the second then the third side of the first triangle is longer than the side of than the third side of the second so let's have an example for example we have these triangles so they have two sides of the following triangle given are congruent to each other so as you can see we have this triangle ABC and triangle XYZ were in uh, the following uh, congruent uh, segment or sides of the following we have uh, for this triangle AB is congruent to this uh, segment XY and we have the other one which is BC and uh, XZ is congruent to each other also since then but according to Hinge theorem we have uh, this one the, the included angle of the following side which is 115 on this triangle and the other one is 60 Therefore, the third side of the triangle ABC is greater than the third side of our triangle XYZ. And that is Hinge theorem. So let's have this example for Hinge theorem solving problem. Solve for the possible values of M. So we have the following. So we have to solve what is the value of M or values of M. So regarding to this one, so as you can see, with the, uh, they have the congruent side, which is 5 and 3 to the other given triangle also. So as you can see, the, uh, the side of the second, which is this second figure, is longer than this. So therefore, we can state now that 2m minus 1 is greater than m plus 4. For us to solve the, the m, so we just uh, transpose negative 1 to the other side. 
So it will become positive 4 and transpose m to the other side, it will become negative m. And then afterwards, simplify. So we have now 2m minus m, that is m, and then 1 plus 4, that is 5. So therefore, the values of m must be greater than 5. We can now go on uh, the last goal which is proving triangle inequalities and these are the following things to consider in writing proofs. Number one, illustrate the problem as it is being stated and described and also number two, labeling properly the drawn figure and number three, write down logically the steps. So usually normally what is being stated first is the given and the final step is to write the statement and reason of what you need to prove. So at this point, we will be using the two-column proof way of proving theorems. And we're in a two-column proof that is consists of a list of statements and the reason why those statements are true. And also, the statements are in the left column and the reason are in the right column. Supposed to be this given A and T, triangle A and T, this triangle, we have A T that is greater than A N. We will going to prove that the angle measurement of A and T, this angle is greater than the measurement of angle T. And by doing that, we draw an angle bisector in this angle A and T. So this is the one the representation and we name as point S on the other point. Therefore, we have this statement wherein we have now this AN is congruent to AS and that is by construction because we construct angle bisector here. And therefore, we can now conclude that triangle ANS, so here ANS is an isosceles triangle. So our reason here is by the definition of isosceles triangle. And therefore, angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent to each other. So our reason that is base angles of an isosceles triangle that is congruent. And since we have that one, therefore we have the angle A and T is equals to this angle, angle 1 plus angle 3. Then our reason that is actually angle addition postulate. Now that we have those following, therefore we have A and T is greater than this angle, angle 1. That is a comparison property inequality. And we have, therefore, if that is greater than angle 1, that is also greater than angle 2. And that is substitution property of the inequality. And we have also angle 2 plus, plus angle uh, NST, this angle is equals to 180 degrees. And that is a linear pair postulate. So they are linear to each other. And we have angle NST. So this angle, angle NST plus this angle, and then plus this angle is actually equals to 180 and that is the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is actually 180 degrees therefore we have now angle 2 plus angle nst is just equals to angle nst plus angle t plus angle 3 and our reason here is the substitution or the transitive property we have now this angle 2 is congruent uh, to or equal to um, angle T plus angle 3. Therefore, our reason is just the subtraction property of, in of equality. And we have also to conclude now, therefore, if that is the case, we have now angle 2 is greater than uh, angle T. So this angle is greater than uh, this angle. So therefore, we have now the reason that is comparison property of uh, inequality. So therefore, we can now conclude that uh, angle A and T, th this angle is uh, greater than angle T. So our reason uh, that is a transitive property. So that's how to prove uh, the following given. I hope uh, you gain some knowledge regarding the uh, learning content or our topic for this week. To sum up the following that we discussed, 
And uh, we have the triangle inequality theorem states that for any triangle, the sum of the lengths of any two sides must be greater than the length of the remaining side. And also, it is not possible to construct a triangle from a three-line segment if any of them is longer than the sum of the other two. And we have this hinge theorem. It states that if two triangles have two congruent sides, then the triangle that has the larger included angle has the, lower, the longer side. And the last one, exterior angle of a triangle state that it is greater than the measure of their or either of the two remote interior angles. For your practice, you try to answer mental math A, number 1 to 5, and mental math B, that is number 11, and mental math C, that is number 13, on page 380. You may refer on the attached answer key on your slide. And your summative task is on the written work too, that is triangle inequalities, that is 10 points. You just access on the BlessMo portal for this summative output during your class time and the deadline is until April 1, 2022. To end up our discussion, may I leave you this values integration. So how do you make a sound judgment? So how useful are they? And according to Exodus 23.1, you shall not spread a false report. You shall not join hands with a wicked man to be a malicious witness. So how important uh, our decisions in life. I hope uh, you gained some knowledge about the lesson for this week. May we have now our closing prayer. And as we say, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn and the capacity to understand. Let our knowledge be of service not only for the attainment of our goals, but also for the benefit of others. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that's it for this week. Keep safe and God bless.